Okay, now we continue with uh, Nicolas Fritzarin, that is a web uh, GD, and uh, we'll talk about uh, Angular 3 Back to the Future. Yeah. Thank you. I don't think this, I think, could be. Uh, anyone hear me? Yes, it's good for. Yeah, this is the problem is that because we are live streaming, uh, we use it to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you hear me? It's okay? Like this? Yeah? I think it will be okay. <laughs> yeah? It's good? Okay. Yeah, try, try to speak a little bit. Okay, okay. Nice. So, I'm um, very happy to be with you today. It's my first time here. And uh, I'm happy to talk about Angular 17. Um, the new feature about Angular 17 and why the core team decided to implement these new features. So, uh, during my flight, I think something um, first my project it was to show you all the slides, but after that I think that it's a better idea to show you a concept and implement it in real code. That's good for everybody? Yeah? Okay. So uh, first, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Nicolas Frizara. I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies and also on Angular. I'm also an OpenJS Foundation member and I work as a developer advocate and senior staff engineer at Sphere Luxembourg. Uh, what we will see today, we will see what is standard components, why we decide to create it, and what are the impacts on st uh, with standard components on the Angular ecosystem. <laughs> then we will see uh, composition API, why we uh, created the composition API and how we created it. And uh, of course, we'll see signals, the most waiting feature about the community, and other cool stuff. So, standalone components. Uh, Paul Kozowski, uh, in the RFC of uh, Angular 14, said, given the central role of NG modules in Angular, it's hard to reason about components, pipe, and directive. And it's very true be because without a module, an Angular application can't work, right? So, who in this room already try Storybook? No? Storybook, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was very complicated for the maintainer of Storybook to uh, to maintain the Angular parts because he has a background in uh, React JS, and in React we can create a component and use it in all in the whole application without um, declare it in a specific place, right? But in Angular it was not possible. In Angular, we have to create um, a component, and these components have to be declared in the annotation of ng modules. Okay, so without a modules, a directive, a pipe, and a component can't exist. So the problems um, with the, stand, uh, the problem with module and what, what problem solves standalone components is first um, we will simplify the hello world. Okay, because when you begin in Angular, before Angular 14, it was so complicated to, um, yeah, to, to create and to um, understand a simple hello world in Angular application because we have four, five, uh, yeah, four files to, uh, to bootstrap an Angular application. The first one will be index.html. This is the entry point of uh, the application because its client-side rendering application needs an entry uh, index.html file. Uh, we have main.ts, an app component.ts, and also modules. So very complicated for a new joiner to understand what happens without, cr without understanding all uh, the modules logic, okay? <clears throat> then uh, reading component is not enough on its own. Okay, because generally uh, you declare a component into a feature module and this feature module depends on other modules like share modules. And sometimes we have some logic in share modules, so if you read the components, we have not enough information to understand what the components uh, do in one read. And then, uh, of course, the bootstrapping is very too complex and uh, it's easy to misuse. So now, uh, when we bootstrap an application in Angular, we have no modules by default. So what does it mean? Let's take a look in the code. So uh, I already bootstrap uh, an application, okay? It's a basic bootstrap, right? Uh, I just added um, a UI library called ng0 for the demo. Uh, just add prettier and for to have good code when I 
create something to you. So what happens? So if you take a look, we have no modules, okay? Um, we have just one main.ts file, and in this file, you can see that we have <coughs> an application, uh, functions called bootstrap application, okay? This application take in parameters, uh, two parameters. First, the standalone components, okay, to bootstrap, and a config option, okay? So if we take a look now in the app components, we can see a new property called standalone. So with this property, you can uh, simply declare a components as a standalone component. So very easy uh, to, to create a standalone component. Just add this property to, to true. Uh, if you add this property to true, um, you have the possibility to add a new uh, property called imports. And uh, this, inside this property, it's an array, and inside this property, you can have uh, modules and also uh, standalone components, directive, and pipes. So what is important to understand is that when you create uh, standalone components behind the scene, when uh, an Angular application will be built, we create um, a fake modules, okay, a virtual modules called also app components, and in this app components, we declare the app components and export it, and that's why we can, how it works under the hood, um, standalone components. Is it okay for everybody, right? Yeah. Um, so, another point, now in Angular, uh, in Angular uh, 17, we have new uh, executor builder, um, and uh, by default, uh, it will be the application builder. So here, this is the new builder. So this builder is very important because it's a hybrid uh, builder because with this builder you can create a client-side rendering application. Okay, just for information, client-side rendering application are an application that are entirely built on the client side. So all the navigation, uh, data fetching, templating are um, managing by the client rather than on the server, right? Um, <clears throat> if you do that, you can see that now we have, uh, it's not the main property, print property is, um, is not correct. If you want, you can use browser. And with that, you tell to Angular that you are creating a, a browser application, so a client side rendering application, okay? But this builder can also use to create server side rendering application. Okay, so what is server-side rendering application? Server-side re rendering application, it's just a client-side application or a universal application rendered uh, on, on, the si on, the, on the server, okay? And it displays just page in HTML, then we have a reiteration to make the application interactive, to make the, your page interactive, okay? Is it okay for everybody for bootstrapping and for standalone components? So standalone components quite quite easy to to use. So now, if um, oh other points when when you create uh, when you use the build Angular application here, what happened? Uh, the, for the for the, the build and the hot module replacement, it use Vite under the hood, okay? But for the build, it will use um, REST module, okay? So what happened now if I just start my application. So you will see, um, oh, uh, sorry. Yes, what we will see here is, um, <clears throat> so the application start very faster, okay, because uh, under the hood it was VIT, and compared to Webpack, VIT uh, starts the application immediately. Okay, it not needs to build all your application. It will build the application uh, when you go to a specific path or something like this. Okay, so what now if I check my application? So it's just the landing page, okay, of uh, ng Zuru, um, and that's all. Okay, so now let's switch to the um, sorry um, slide. So we will see that. Um, so what's the impacts of standalone components? 
standard components have several impacts on um, the routing, bootstrapping, and of course injector. Bootstrapping, we've already seen that. Okay, the boot, we can now bootstrap on a standard components, and with that, the bootstrapping of an Angular application is totally uh, easy now. And the user and developer experience and the learning, learning curve is impacted in a good way, right? So now, uh, standard components have impacts on uh, routing. Of course, we have a few, lot of questions. Uh, first, is it possible to navigate on a standalone component? Then, uh, can we lazy load a standalone component? Can we lazy load a, a set of standalone components? And do we have some regression? Because if we have no regression, we can create an application uh, with a cohabitation with modules and standalone components. This will be this will help to to make a, a migration for a um, huge application. And. Uh, Injector uh, have, uh, is also impacted because um, injector we have the root injector, we have a module injector, and we have the components or the element injector in Angular, right? But if we have no modules, what happened for the module injector? So we created a new one called environment injector. So routing, <coughs> um, we have a lot of. Uh, feature now we can of course um, route. Uh, you can navigate on standard components. You can navigate on a classic components as we do before. Uh, we can lazy load uh, a standalone components, and of course we can lazy load uh, a standalone of um, a set of standalone components. So I think now it's a good idea to to make a live demo. Uh, let's do that. So. Um, <clears throat> Everybody see my screen correctly? Yeah. So uh, let's go. I will create um, a new feature, right, called <laughs> to-do list. OK, it will be the basic application. So um, let's call that. So um, I, have a I have a feature. And in this feature, um, I create a new directory called to do's and inside it I will create a new um, directory called list and inside this I will create a standalone components. So um, okay here I will create a component okay in that components I have uh, no selector because we will navigate on these components so no, it's not needed to have a selector but we need a template, um, and in this template, uh, we'll see what we make, uh, we do in it. Um, standalone, which is important, set standalone to true. Here, create a class called um, to do's list components. Okay, so this is a basic. Um, Components. Okay, we created a standard component very easily. Now let's have the template. I know it's bad to do a copy paste, but for this live demo, it will be okay. Okay, so now I have my um, list components, and in my feature, I will create a file called um, to do's dot root dot ts okay um, I will declare my to do's root this will be uh, of type root and this it will be uh, component to do's Why? Um, so why you don't find my to do's component? That's oh, okay. That's because I rename it to do list components. Okay. Um, I think it's good, <laughs> right? I have declared my so new functionalities of Angular. We can now ex we can export default something. 
it's now possible. So I export my default is to do the root. Okay, so here I declare my root. And now uh, in my app root, I have my path, and my path is pies redirect to do's. And so my path is to do's, and here we can lazy load, okay, the to do's feature. Okay, how we do that? So it's load children like we do, like we do did before, like children, and um, here I will create an asynchronous function to import my pass. Uh, yeah, that's that's all. Okay, so now we have the root. And normally, uh, it will work. So how I know that? I have a chunk here. So here we said, um, this said that we created, we lazy load uh, all the routes, okay? So now if I go to the application, I hope it will work. Oh, sorry. So this is, this not worked, to be honest, because, um, <laughs> I know, because I have the same template here, so if I want to to show you if it worked, it's router outlets. So this is also a new feature of Angular. It's not needed if you don't have uh, some contents beside two, uh, two tag, inside two tag, okay? You can just use this like this, auto, cl auto close tag, right? So now it will work. Okay, it changed, so now if I do that, it worked. Okay, so if I check, normally, I have an ng component here, okay, because I have no selector, now that's why Angular creates ng components. Okay, it's okay for everybody, yeah? <clears throat> so, okay, so that's, um, I created the, the, the road configuration, but what I hide to you is how to, register my route configuration. Because before Angular 14, we used router.modules, okay? But now, we create application without modules. So it, does make, it doesn't make sense anymore to import the router, the router modules. And for that, the core team of Angular are sure of that, that they can solve every problem with the injection dependency, okay? With a GI. So for that, in your, app config, uh, in your app configuration, I have a new things, a, a new function. This is a, a function that exports the routing, to be honest, okay? This function will expose um, all the provider that expose the, the router modules, okay? So when you register your routing with provide router uh, and give in the first parameter your your route configuration. At this moment, exactly, you register um, for your whole application, all the provider like activated routes, router, location, etc. Is it good for everybody? So now, how I can configure my routing? So before, because in router module, we give in first parameter the route configuration and also some option, right? How we do that? Now Angular um, creates root feature. So what is router feature? Router feature is function that um, configure your routing. So by default, route, um, routing in Angular is based on the pushed HTML5 mode. Okay, so if we take a look here, I don't have a hash, a hash, right? This is perfect for the indexation, but sometimes it's we have to manage, when you do that, we have to manage the redirection on the backend side. And sometimes it's quite complicated and that's why we can have an, another mode which is not the default one. And this default mode is with hash the hash location strategy. So we will have a hash here, okay? So how we can do that? Just with that, with hash location, okay? At this moment, you tell to Angular now, Use the hash location uh, strategy pass. Let's do. Let's take a look if it if it works. And 
and it works. Okay, the URL change. So if you want to configure configure correctly your your routing, you have to use uh, all this uh, router feature function. So we have a lot of. Uh, if you take a look, you can have uh, with. Uh, router config, and here we can have some option like on same URL navigation, console navigation resolution, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so it's very easy now to register a routing without thinking about how works the modules because it was complicated. Remember, we have to use router module dot for root, and in a child we have to use router dot for child. So we have to understand the difference before uh, using routing. Is it good for um, everybody? Yeah? So, we will see that, okay? So, environment injector. Um, why I will explain environment injector? Because it's very important to understand that we have a new environment injector. So how we can create environment injector easily. Uh, before that, remember, when we have a feature module, you can register a provider for this specific feature module. So all the components registered in this specific module, in this feature module, can use the provider. Okay, but other components don't. So without modules, it will be complicated to do that uh, to do that. And that's why we created the environment injector. Environment injector is very easy to implement. You have just to register your user services in the path. Okay, so at this moment when you um, do that, okay, um, you register the, the user services for all the components declared in the children. Also, if you have a component here, inside children, you register the provider for its com this component. That, that's good for everybody. So now, how works the bubbling injector? Because before, we have the element injector. If the provider was not found, he will go upside and find in uh, other component injector. If you don't find the, 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 inject, the asked injector, he go to the module injector, that was before. And if in this module, he don't find, he go to the root injector. Okay, but now we have a new environment injector and because we can create application, uh, hybrid application with modules and standalone components, we can have both module injector and environment injector. So how is served um, a token uh, in, in the injection? So first, of course, uh, he take a look in, in the first one with element injector. If he don't find, he go uh, upside and check in the module injector, and if you don't find, you go upside and check in environment injector, and if you don't find, you go to the root injector. So now we have just the environment injector between the root injector and the module injector for the bubbling uh, resolution, okay? So, um, composition API. So, composition API PI is, um, yeah, quite quite uh, complicated before Angular 14 uh, due to the fact that the inject function can be used outside of the injection context. So if you, you, if you use the inject function inside uh, at injectable annotation, it will work. That's that's true. But if you use it in app components, it will not work before uh, Angular 14. And without this, we can't create composition. Okay, we can create uh, a specific piece of code uh, for a reusing logic, okay, with a provider. It was not possible. But now, it's possible. So thanks to the fact that you can use the inject function inside, uh, outside the injector context, you can uh, create some composable uh, function. So what is a composable uh, function? First, it, Thanks to, to the inject function, you, composition, you can create high, high reusable code. Uh, guard can be a function, and interceptor can be also a function. Because before that, we create class for interceptor and for guards only because we need uh, to inject some or providers of our application, okay? But now, 
because we can create the inject function, we can use the inject function outside the, con the injection context, guard and interceptor not need anymore to be a class. They can just be a function. <coughs> um, so, now, uh, that's an example of a composition helper. I think um, we already did that. Everybody do that to retrieve a parameter in the URL, okay? It, 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 it be exactly the same code uh, every time, okay? We just injected the activity root, get the params map, get the, get the params and return it. And it's always the same logic, right? So now we can just create a, a get params function Okay, and in this function, you can inject the activated root and then return uh, params map.py pure observable, right? And in the components, you can just uh, use a get params function at the initialization, okay? And it will work. That's, that's awesome, to be honest. Uh, question. Is, is it possible to inject a provider at a runtime? So imagine when I said that, it, when you click on a button, you inject a specific provider. So the answer is totally yes. <laughs> you can do that uh, thanks to the run injection context and in this function you can just give the parent injector, which is generally the element injector or the module injector. Then um, inject your provider and do the logic you want. Just a restriction is the function, the callback function here can't be an asynchronous one, okay? So, um, yeah, guard as a function, before we have uh, this, so I create a guard, I inject my router, and uh, if uh, the ID match, the parameter match the pattern I navigate, if not, I create a new URL tree uh, and redirect to home, okay? So this is very uh, easy now to, um, to change and just copy paste the logic into a function, okay? So you have a function which by default have as a parameter the activated root snapshots, and you can inject your routing and do some stuff with the activated root snapshot, right? So it's exactly the same logic. Interceptor as well. So I have an interceptor, and um, yeah, I intercept my request, clone my request, and then uh, let them uh, my request go to the network. With function is exactly the same. One thing is different is that uh, next is uh, a function. It's not an object that handles something. Okay, it, it's a function. You you give the function, uh, uh, you give the clone request to this function, return the next, and it will work. Your net your um, call go to the server. So how to register interceptors? First one provide HTTP clients with interceptor and give the all the function uh, intercept function and provide HTTP clients with interceptor from the I, sorry, if there is a little typo mistake, there is no uh, brackets. This function takes no arguments because Angular we solved um, all your uh, register interceptor thanks to the dependency injection, okay? So this, we have to use this if you continue to register interceptor as a class, right? So let's do a little demo, I think it's time. So now in my um, to-do list, I will try to retrieve a list of to-do, okay? So uh, for that, first, um, in my app config, I have to, I have to, to register my client's HTTP, right? Because before, to, to use the HTTP clients, we have to register in the import the HTTP clients modules, okay? So let's do that. It's with, no, sorry, provide HTTP clients, and it's finished. Okay, so here I register my um, HTTP clients, okay? Then, now it's time to uh, create a new directory 
core and in this directory I will create a new one which called um, providers and in this one I will create a new one called um, data services and here just um, services. In this one I will create the data uh, to do services which is just a services that requests the data. No transformation. Transformation go to the services, but no on the data services. Okay? So let's create a new one. It will be to do uh, dot data services dot ts, right? And here I create an injectable. I provide in, in my root injector. And I export a class called to do data services, no need of constructor. And I use, um, yeah, read only HTTP client equal, in, equal inject, sorry, um, yeah, HTTP, no. Okay? So why this hashtag? This is a specific JavaScript uh, feature, okay? So before that, we create private read-only, but private was just a sugar syntaxic, okay? He not create a real private variable in JavaScript. Thanks to the hashtag here, JavaScript will create a real private JavaScript variable, okay? So now, Let's call get to do's, all right? Um, this, I, sorry, just create in my uh, application a new directory called uh, shared slash, sorry, models to create my to do interface, okay? New file to do's point interface, sorry, not yes. Okay, and um, for that, I will use a JSON placeholder fake API because I not created a server for this demo. Um, to do's. Okay? No, it's not okay. It's here. Um, this is the interface. to do, I create an interface, then I have this, this is a number, this is a number, this is a string, and this is a boolean, right? And because I use slint and prettier, automatically when I save, it fix all the mistakes. So this is um, my surface, this is my endpoints, so get to do's return an observable, right, of an array, sorry, of uh, an array of e to do, okay? And this return, um, this dot http clients point dot gate an array of e to do okay so now I create my data services my method is not uh, used so now I have to create my services called to do's dot service dot yes and if this is exactly the same so I will create an injectable I provide this in my uh, root scope I export my class, which is to do to do services, and instead of injected directly, um, why injectable? Uh, oh, okay. Sometimes it happens. 
that will be good. So this is to do the services. Here it's, um, oh, sorry, I rename it, so it will be um, to do's, to do data uh, services, service. Here I inject to do data services, so um, yeah, here it's more to do's. And here it's it get to do's. We can remove all this, all this, and this is not needed anymore, to be honest, because inference of typing. Okay, so you know now how to inject, you use the inject function, okay? So we can do exactly uh, the same here in my components. Uh, my components. Let's do that, all right? So let's create a to-dos. Um, so here I have to inject my function, it will be uh, to do's services is equal to inject this one. It's okay, yes? And now I can use my uh, to do services, get to do's, and it's finished. Let's do that, okay, and make it unobservable for this moment, right? And in my now, here, I will create just um, this, so look, I need the async pipe, okay, to subscribe in my view to my observable, right? Let's do that, so to do that, I have just, just to, to add the async pipe into the imports array, so it's quite easy, okay? Because async pipe is also now a standalone directive, uh, pipes, sorry. Right. Okay. Now, to do's dot async, and here I will just have a tap uh, operator because I just show you the log, which is more important of displaying something right. And yeah, it's tabled. <coughs> okay. So um, now, if I take a look in uh, my um, in my terminal, you will see something. Uh, yeah, new dependency is optimized. Eric GS optimized dependency change. So at this moment, wait. Now that you have Eric GS, so he um, use a prebuild, okay? Because in my view, I use Eric GS. It's okay. So now if I go to the browser and um, go to my log, I retrieve all my to-dos. Okay, so console table lets you to display a table inside the console. It's a little uh, tips, okay? And it's more easier to read, true? Okay, <clears throat> so now uh, let's continue to, to the presentation. Um, also, um, this is directive composition. Directive composition is a way to say goodbye to mixing. So what is mixing? Mixing is something, a piece of code that will, you will use in all your components, okay? Um, in Angular, it's a bad practice to do that, right? The only repo that uses mixing is Angular Material, to be honest. So another way to extend something, it will, you have a class and extends another class. But the problem with that is you can't extend multiple class. You can just extend one class. So a solution to do that is you extend a class that extends another class and etc. But it's a very bad pattern. So that's why Angular creates the host uh, directive. Um, yeah, this is the host directive property. Okay, and in this host directive, you can just say which directive you will extend. Okay, and expose the input or the output that uh, this base fair button directive will expose to the new one. 
Okay? Here, I just rename it. So the color input is the buffer uh, button inputs, and I rename it to uh, type. Okay? And that's why when I use fair button strikes, I have I can use the type button, uh, type button, and type primary. Okay, it's not correctly uh, named, but uh, the type here is, the, in fact, the color input of the sphere, the bus sphere button directive. Okay, and of course, view children and content children will work with that. Okay, sign nodes and reactivity. Um, what we are prone of uh, sign nodes? Lazy evaluation and RxJS integration, okay? So uh, keep in mind that signals will not replace RxJS. They will be browser, they can work together, okay? Uh, signals is just for a state of your components, RxJS is for uh, the user uh, flow, okay? When you click on a button, this is the user flow, okay? When you display something in the screen, like a loading, this is uh, a state of your components. So I, how it worked? So it is based on the um, it's based on the Git li like Git. Okay, it's a pull push uh, system. Okay, so when you have a new value for signals, uh, in fact, it's um, okay. You increment uh, um, the, the the value version, and he pushed the value version, notify all its consumer like is even or effect, okay? And is effects say now, okay, I have something, the value change of the counter, and it will pull the value, okay? And because it pulls the value, the effect is reevaluated, okay? What is very important is that keep in mind that currently counter modulo two equals zero, it's um, true or false. If you, your signal is to two, uh, this never change, to be honest, okay? It will never recalculate it if the previous value don't change, okay? Um, so um, I think a demo is more important, okay? So, and like this, I can show you the integration of, um, <coughs> the integration of signals with RxJS, right? So let's do that. So now uh, I will do, I will keep that, and I will change my uh, to-dos. Okay, and here I will use two signals. And in this one, I just have, I, I just give an observable. So let's do that. This is what I have before. I can just remove it. And um, I have an initial value, okay, called, um, Initial value, and this is an empty array. Right? Now, let's use um, this in my template. It's okay for everybody. And for that, I will use a new code flow syntax of Angular. So, this is a new feature of Angular 7. No ng if, no ng for anymore. So, how you do that? For, like this to do of to do's. No, it's not needed to, to have a bypassing because you have a signals, you have not an observable, right? Then to do's re re return a signals. And if you want to have signals, you have to use the function. But don't worry, this function is safe, okay? You can use it in your templates. So if you do that, it's now mandatory to have a track to have an optimization for the performance, okay? And I will try to do by user um, ID, okay? Um, yeah, oh, I think it does. Let, I just finished that and it will be good. No, by ID, sorry. Okay, and um, yeah, have here to do description. Let's take a look if it works. And uh, I don't think it refresh. 
to be honest, because uh, to do this correct, let me return. Uh, it's not uh, to do of to do. Okay. Um, oh no, it's title. Sorry. Where is my components? Oh, it's here. And it works as expected. Okay, and it's finished. Um, I can give you uh, my slides before I think I have just another thing which is uh, differ uh, the new way to implement the CLS. Uh, uh, the CLS Core Web Vitals, okay? You can just have add differ uh, on a specific interaction. We have several interactions on hover or something like this. And with that, uh, Angular will create a specific change for this uh, component and uh, until the interaction is not respected, the change is not downloaded, okay? So uh, you have a placeholder loading and error in case of um, the download of your file is not worked. Load placeholder is before the um, downloading begin and loading is when the downloading of your components is in progress, right? Um, yeah, thank you very much. You can follow me on uh, LinkedIn, uh, Nicolas Frizarin, or on Twitter. And if you have questions, don't hesitate. And thanks again for listening to me.